clearly <clears throat> I wasn't expecting to do a video today but um, I saw this and now I kind of have to it's so insulting and offensive I'm talking about Barnes and Noble dying the classics I don't know my face is red again it's always hot in the evening it's almost always hot in the evening I can't help it. For some reason, get feverish in the evening. So please, bear with me. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kirk Patty Cake, and um, <laughs> oh my gosh, do I have a story for you? Because apparently the same day that I saw it coming across my feed, it has been canceled. Thank God. So this morning it was apparently announced that Barnes & Noble is going to release a bunch of the classics. As you can see in the, the background here, Frankenstein, Romeo and Juliet, Treasure Island, uh, Wizard of Oz, Secret Garden, Moby Dick, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. They were going to release a handful, maybe a dozen or so classics, and but replace the cover with black people or pox. And the backlash was apparently so great when they announced this or when people started finding out that they have now canceled it. Let's get into the article. Barnes & Noble has shelved their plans to release a collection of classic books with new culturally diverse covers following internet backlash. Penguin Random House and Barnes & Noble Fifth Avenue had originally up to give 12 classic young adult novels new covers known as diverse editions. The books were meant to hit the shelves February 5th and the books were to be displayed on their massive storefront throughout the month of February. Barnes & Noble Fifth Avenue was also supposed to host a launch event to celebrate the release. Each title had five culturally diverse custom covers designed to ensure the recognition, representation, and inclusion of various multi-ethnic backgrounds reflected across the country. The new covers are a part of a new initiative to champion diversity in literature. Following the news of the new covers, many Twitter users expressed their anger and disappointment over the situation, citing that a better option would have been to promote Promote authors of color. Barnes & Noble released a statement on Twitter acknowledging the concerns of the public and ultimately canceled the release event at the store. Oh, and that was just updated a couple hours ago. So, like I said, this, this article is not very long. It said something completely different a little bit ago because this was still on when I saved this article. But apparently... <laughs> Barnes & Noble realized that you can't just take books that are written by white people about white cultures, slap black people on the front of them, or any other racial whatever, and consider it diversity. This is suicide. As I mentioned in my RWA video, which you can see if you like, when you introduce diversity things specifically into your company in an attempt to make to be a sales ploy it does not work and that's what this is in the writing industry and that's what i have said for years now when we've got hashtag diversity when we've got hashtag own voice and those are in the list down with romance and fantasy and sci-fi you're a genre to be sold you're not a person you're not a specific voice and we'll come back to this there are a couple of things that really disturbed me when I first saw this article this morning. Number one, let's talk about cultural appropriation first. I'm told as a white author I'm not allowed to write certain characters because I don't have that ethnic background so I can't possibly understand it. And if I try to write somebody else, some other race, I'm considered uh, appropriating it. 
But if you take books written by white authors, specifically from white backgrounds, from white cultures, and place other races on the front of them, that's not cultural appropriation. The other thing that I really had a problem with this is while it was going around online, it was I saw it in the progressive circle being called black facing. Why is it considered blackface? And so then it's offensive to black people, but it's not considered cultural appropriation. However, if you do the same thing, it's called whitewashing. Like it's always the, the terms used are always used to denigrate white people, whether white people are considered in the victim category, you know, where you're stealing their stories and putting somebody else's face on them, or you're putting a white person into a situation that was not previously white. It's always attack the white person. So that's disturbing. <clears throat> I also want to mention how insulting is it that that these companies, these marketing experts. So so this is entirely a marketing ploy. And if you don't see that, I'm sorry. This should make it very clear that what we're experiencing with diversity is a marketing ploy. And it's also a failing marketing ploy. Anytime a company pushes diversity into their situation, they end up destroying their company, hurting their company. It is a losing battle. And what I keep seeing, I'm not on the inside of these companies. So I can't tell you. So I can't tell you how it's really going down on the inside, but I can tell you what it is from the outside. And it looks like marketing campaigners or marketing researchers are going onto Twitter to see what people are saying they want to read or they want to see. Now, the problem with that is that Twitter represents a very small part of the population. Like the studies have said something about like 20% of the population, maybe 20% of the American population maybe uses Twitter and about 80% of the posts from Twitter are made by 2% of the Twitter user base, which means the people that you see posting a lot on Twitter are actually not that much of America. However, if the marketing researchers go on to Twitter to see what people are saying they want to read and they see all of this very hardcore stuff, it's not going to reflect well in the sales because it doesn't actually reflect the American population or the rating population. And this is also why I'm going to assume that we see fewer and fewer readers every year because they're marketing to a base that's not there or that's not that big. The other problem that you see when you're trying to market research using social media is that a lot of people who don't believe in specific leftist ideologies keep getting banned. So you don't get to see what they want to read. And that is, again, another part of the population. I'm not talking about whatever kind of extreme ideologies you're thinking of. I'm just thinking of regular Trump supporters that are considered racists and then kind of get kicked off. It happens a lot more than you'd think. So Marketing research, I think, is failing these people. And that's how you end up with something like this where they go, hey, they want, they're calling for diversity. They want to see more diverse people on the marketplace. So we're just going to put black people on the covers. How stupid do these people have to think you are that they can just take a story that already exists and splash your face on it and you're good? Well, technically... You're not without blame, community. I just got to say, when you see Ariel from The Little Mermaid and she just gets splashed with black on the front and everybody's like, hex yes, you're kind of telling them that this is okay with you. This is really just mirroring what has been okayed by everybody that wants to see black Ariel because you didn't demand a new story. You were happy with splash somebody else's race on a white person, splash some other race's face, on a mythology of a of white people instead of creating your own fresh new mermaid tale and there is such a story to be told with different cultures and mermaids but instead of doing that you know they know if they, if they just if they just painted a different color you won't notice that they didn't put any effort into building something new and that's obviously where this this cancellation came from is i saw a lot of people getting mad at this because they're like well well, you're still pushing white authors. Why would you say that you're that you're supporting diversity while you're selling white authors? That's disturbing in its own way. It is true. But it's also disturbing that it really doesn't matter. As long as you're selling white people, these people aren't going to be happy. Like the other big thing I took away from this push is that you're saying, so we've got these classical books, you know, Frankenstein and Romeo and Juliet and Moby Dick and all of these. And these are white 
are stories about white people written by white people in a majority white culture or various white cultures. And when you just plaster another race into each of them, and especially you said there were like, they said there were five different covers for different all the different races to be put across each of these. When you say that every single race is interchangeable, you can just, there's nothing that makes Frankenstein specifically white. Just put a black person on it. And there's nothing that makes it specifically black. So put an Asian on it. And there's nothing that makes it specifically Asian. Just put a Hispanic on it. You are actually fully undermining this whole idea of different perspectives or own voice because you're saying everyone is interchangeable, everybody is replaceable, and nobody has an original culture or an original background or an original thought or any of that. And that is insulting. You're saying that you can change any character inside of any story whatsoever. You could change their race. You could probably change their gender with a lot of this too. And it won't change anything about the character. It will have no effect at all. So why bother putting any sort of background on that character? Whether you're black or white, you're going to respond the same. <laughs> I can't believe they didn't think this through. But again... That slightly has to do, Twitter is slightly at fault for that as well. Okay, people, if you see another person getting replaced, if you see MJ getting replaced, if you see MJ from Spider-Man getting replaced with a black girl and you clapped your hands, if you saw little Annie from the, the musical getting replaced with a black girl and you clapped your hand because you said representation, if you saw Ariel and clapped your hand because you said representation, this is on you because you are feeding the market researchers saying that this was okay. You were telling them that you don't need new stories. You just need to see somebody that looks like you on the cover and you'll buy it. And that is really shallow, in my opinion. You're telling me that I need to read more vastly. If I look at my shelves and I see a bunch of names by white people on my shelves or books with white people on the covers, I'm being a racist by picking up what's considered a classic because there are no people of color in this specific selection. However, these people think, these people, by these people, I mean the marketing researchers, think that the only way they can get black people to read or anybody who's not white to read is by making somebody look like them on the cover. Is that not insulting? But at the end of the day, I hope it is clear to everybody who witnessed this and who everybody who is finding out about this after the fact, diversity, inclusion, equity, equality, whatever it is, die and own voice are marketing trends. There are marketing campaigns no different than when the market was flooded with vampires and the market was flooded with zombies and the market was flooded with dystopians. And as soon as diversity falls out of what's popular, as soon as Twitter is gone, mind you, which then the marketing researchers will have to go somewhere else for their research and they'll have to actually find the majority of the population. As soon as your trend is over, they're not going to care about diverse voices anymore. There's no such thing as a moral or immoral business. There's a business that makes money and there's a business that shuts down. And every last one of them is going to look at the market and try to find what's going to bring them the most attention, what's going to bring them the most money. And then they're going to market to that. You're falling hard for the diversity genre just like you fell hard for the vampire genre. Problem is, you don't see that you are the product they're selling. And when we all move on to slapstick comedy, you're going to stand there with your book, with your character that's just like you and go, why doesn't anybody want me? Honey, they never wanted you. They wanted what made the money. Everything is about the money. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.